All right, last, let's look at osmosis. Um, I got a suggestion to use some red blood cell pictures in the lecture. So that's what I did. And hopefully this kind of helps you understand the process. Uh, you probably have seen this picture many, many times. And uh, it is a, a great picture to kind of show you what happens when you put red blood cells in different types of uh, solutions. Now, hypertonic solution. I know it's a, it sounds like a bizarre word, but when you see the tonic part of this word, just think of it as solute concentration, right? How much salt you have, how much ions you have, how much um, proteins you have. And hyper means a high, right? So hypertonic solution just means a solution that has more solutes, a like higher concentration of solutes than what's inside the cell. So let me just repeat real quick. A hypertonic solution has a higher concentration of solute. Higher solute concentration than what's in our cells. And so that's a hypertonic solution. And as you can guess, hypertonic solution is a solution that has a lower solute concentration than what's in our cells. And when you look at the picture in the middle, isotonic, iso means equal. So isotonic solution has the same concentration of solute as our cells. So that's equal. And this is greater than cells, uh, equal to cells. And this is less than cells. All right. Now, when we look at the first picture, if you put cells in a hypertonic solution, so I'm going to use the real numbers to kind of help you conceptualize. Um, let's use sodium chloride. Sodium chloride concentration in our red blood cells is 0.9%. Okay. Now, hypertonic solution is going to have a higher concentration than that. right? So let's say 5%. In osmosis, we're thinking about how water moves. And water moves from low solute which is 0.9% to high solute. So water is going to move out of the cell, right? And into, oops, out of the cell and into this hypertonic solution. As water leaves the cells, the cells are going to shrink, right? Because they're losing a lot of volume. So you're going to see cells shrivel um, as this process, as osmosis is happening. Okay, now in isotonic solution, there is water movement. There is constantly water movement. But what happens is the amount of water moving in is the same as the amount of water moving out, right? Because the solute concentrations are the same uh, inside and outside the cell. So the rate of water movement is going to be the same. So in the end, it's balanced, right? Um, the cells are going to maintain their regular shape. So you're gonna not so you're not gonna see any changes. And if cells are in a hypotonic solution, so again, inside the cell we have 0.9% sodium chloride. And let's say this hypotonic solution has a 0.3%. Okay. Um, so now you are probably really good at this, right? Water moves from low solute to high solute. So water moves into the cell, and that's gonna cause the cells to expand. Right, so they're gonna get bigger, and they can't really hold for that long, right? So if there's too much water moving in, um, eventually the cell is just gonna explode, right? It can't really deal with all that much water, all that pressure, so it's it's, it's gonna break. Okay, so this is uh, what happens to cells when you put them in different solutions, right, with different tonicities. Okay, and um, I just include this feature because it's a. Uh, more like a realistic so you can see this is what cells look like when they shrivel up really kind of wrinkle they get there they get a lot smaller right? and then this is a, a normal shape for red blood cells and then this is kind of what happens when um, the cells explode right because there's too much water moving in all right now let's look at a couple of practice questions and uh, this is the first question
Now, this is about people with COPD and how this condition could affect a gas exchange at the lungs, right? So you guys are probably familiar with COPD, like um, emphysema or chronic uh, bronchitis. Those are conditions that are categorized as COPD. So people with a COPD um, tend to have short breath and they get tired very easily because their body doesn't get enough oxygen. Uh, when someone has COPD, this condition would reduce the concentration of oxygen in the alveoli, right? Because you can't breathe as well, right? You, you can't get in enough air into the lungs in the alveoli. So there's a less oxygen in the patient's lungs. And this slows down which process? Now for these gas molecules to move, you have to have a concentration gradient, right? So the greater the concentration gradient is, which means the concentrations are more different in the blood and in the alveoli, that will make diffusion go faster. But if you have less oxygen in the alveoli, then that means the difference in oxygen concentration in the alveoli and in the blood is going to be smaller. So COPD will slow down diffusion of oxygen from alveoli to Okay, next question. Okay, so this is about osmosis, right? We're looking at how cells respond to a solution. What type of solution? Normally, the cells require 0.5% glucose solution, but the lab assistant accidentally made 1%. Right? So this is going to be a hypertonic solution, right? So when you put cells in a hypertonic solution, they're going to lose water, right? Because water moves from low concentration to high concentration in terms of a solute. So water moves out of the cells and the cells are gonna shrivel up, right? So A is the correct answer. So I hope after this lesson, you, whenever you see questions on T's, you're gonna get those questions correct and you're gonna get all the points. All right. Now, if the lesson is helpful, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment if you have any questions, and definitely share the video with um, other students who are also preparing for T's so that uh, they can benefit as well. And this will uh, help me. The more people watch the videos and use the materials, the more support I will get to make more videos and make more study materials. All right. Thank you, guys. See you next time.